वेलकम बैक टू स्टैटिस्टिक्स मेड सिंपल एंड आई एम सविता बलसंग In this video, we learn the third test and the chi-square test, which is the chi-square test for independence of attributes. I will now explain the procedure for the chi-square test for independence of attributes. Let us first consider a population of size capital N. The units in the population are classified on the basis of two attributes A and B. All of you are aware that an attribute is a qualitative characteristic which varies from unit to unit. Now attribute A is further divided into two classes A1 and A2 and attribute B is further divided or classified into two classes B1 and B2. The cell frequencies are written in the form of a 2 by 2 contingency table as shown below. Now observe the 2 by 2 contingency table. You will see to the extreme left of the table you have attribute A which is divided into the two classes A1 and A2. So A1 and A2 represent the rows and you also see the attribute B which is divided into two classes B1 and B2 and B1 and B2 represent the columns of the table. Now you also see the cell frequencies denoted in blue color by alphabets in lower case like A, B, C and D. Then you also observe that there are two cross arrows, one in pink color and the other in green color. The pink arrow is from A to D and the green arrow is from B to C. In the table, you also see the total column and the total row. So when I add the cell frequencies corresponding to A1, I get the total as A plus B. And when I add the cell frequencies corresponding to A2, I get the total as C plus D. Similarly, when I add the cell frequencies corresponding to the column B1, I get A plus C. And when we add the cell frequencies corresponding to the column B2, we get B plus D. Next, if I add the totals corresponding to row A1 and A2, we get capital N is equal to A plus B plus C plus D. And similarly, when I add the totals corresponding to the two columns B1, B2, I get capital N equal to A plus B plus C plus D. Important point to remember here is when a 2 by 2 contingency table is given to us or if we form the 2 by 2 contingency table using the information which is given then the cell frequencies A, B, C, D should be marked in the same way as I have shown in this particular table and always remember to draw the cross arrows because it will help us to remember the formula correctly. The table which I just now explained, you have seen that A and B are two attributes which are divided into two classes A1, A2 and B1, B2 respectively. For example, suppose I take an attribute A as literacy. Then A1 will denote those who are literates and A2 will denote the illiterates. Similarly, if I take another attribute B as employment, B1 will denote those who are employed and B2 will denote those who are unemployed. So continuing, the cell frequencies which you see in the table, that is small a, it denotes the number of units which possess the attributes A1, B1. Similarly, the cell frequency small b denotes the number of units which possess the attributes A1, B2. The cell frequency C denotes the number of units which possess the attributes A2 and B1 
and the cell frequency D denotes the number of units which possess the attributes A2, B2. In the chi-square test for independence of attributes, the null hypothesis is of the form H0. The attributes A and B are independent versus H1, the attributes A and B are not independent. So the example which I took, H0 will be literacy and employment are independent versus H1, literacy and employment are not independent. Or another form of writing H0 is the attributes A and B are not associated versus H1, the two attributes A and B are associated. So depending on the word independent or the word associated in the question, you have to write your H0 and H1 accordingly. Under H0, the test statistic is chi-square equal to capital N and then from the table, multiply the first cross arrow values that is AD minus, multiply the second cross arrow values that is BC, the whole square divided by, now the denominator is easy to remember, it is the product of all the totals. So we write the first row total that is A plus B, then the second row total that is into C plus D into the first column total that is A plus C and the second column total that is B plus D. So it's an easy way to remember the formula and this follows chi-square with one degree of freedom. Just like the chi-square test for goodness of fit, the chi-square test for independence of attributes is also a right-tailed test. Now what we are learning is a 2 by 2 contingency table and I am going to explain how we got the degrees of freedom as 1. Now suppose we have an m by n contingency table where m stands for the number of rows and n stands for the number of columns. For such a table the degrees of freedom is m minus 1 into n minus 1. But because here we have a 2 by 2 contingency table, that is we have 2 rows and 2 columns, the degree of freedom is calculated using the formula 2 minus 1 into 2 minus 1, which is equal to 1. So that's how we get the degrees of freedom as 1 for the chi-square test of independence of attributes. Now let us learn the last part, that is the conclusion. So you have to check if chi-square is greater than k2 at alpha level of significance for one degree of freedom. This is important. Then we reject H0, otherwise we accept H0. Now, those who can remember the K2 value at 5% and 1% for one degree of freedom, you can memorize these two values or if you find it difficult, then you can use the statistical table. So under note, I have at 5% level of significance for 1 degree of freedom, K2 is 3.84 and at 1% level of significance for 1 degree of freedom, K2 is 6.65. It's actually easy to remember the K2 value for 1 degree of freedom at 5% and 1%. Like I already said, if you find it difficult, then please use the statistical tables. There are three conditions under which the chi-square test for independence of attributes is applicable. Firstly, the observations are independent and random in nature. Second is the total frequency that is capital N. It should be large that is usually greater than or equal to 50. And third is all the expected cell frequency should be greater than or equal to 5. From this video, please learn to mark the attributes A and B correctly along with the cell frequencies A, B, C, D in the correct order which will help you to remember the formula correctly. 
Thank you all for watching and look out for my next video where I'll find solutions to problems based on the chi-square test for independence of attributes.